All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com to have another exciting episode for you. And here it is, May, and it's a beautiful day in my garden. Rained pretty hard last night, but today it's like 70 degrees out, nice and sunny. Um, as you guys see, I got basically all my peppers planted out, so I planted peppers with sweet potatoes. But this is not a gardening video, this is my OK Raw channel. <laughs> so in this episode, actually, I'm going to explain to you guys why I will never make a video that says why I'm no longer vegan, right? I think those videos are dumb, they're kind of there to kind of get views, as is maybe this video is too. But I want to share with you guys my opinions on this topic. Uh, we're going to learn more about veganism, also about raw foods, and some recent, I'm going to respond to some recent comments that I got recently as well. So before I go on, I want to first define what is veganism, or vegan, and I guess that depends what website you go to. So we're going to share three different definitions of veganism. First is from vegan.org or the vegan society which coined the term in 1944 I believe and it says a, a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals for food clothing or any other purpose and by extension promotes the development and use of animal free alternatives for the benefit of humans animals and the environment in dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or in part from animals. All right, so that's kind of the definition that I like to say, you know, when I think of, when I think of vegan, but you might go from the Merriam-Webster dictionary. It says a definition of vegan, a strict vegetarian who consumes no food such as meat, eggs, or dairy products that comes from animals. Also, one who abstains from using animal products such as leather. And then if you look up Wikipedia, I think this is probably the most, uh, you know, maybe uh, succinct definition. Veganism is a practice of abstaining, and so it says abstaining, it's nothing like, uh, you know, anyways. Uh, okay, so let's start over. Veganism is a practice of abstaining from the use of animal products, particularly in diet and associated philosophy that rejects the commodity status of animals. A follower of the diet or the philosophy is known as a vegan. Distinctions may be made between several categories of veganism. Dietary vegans, or strict vegetarians, refrain from consuming animal products, not only meat, but also eggs, dairy products, and other animal-derived substances. The term ethical vegan is often applied to those who not only follow a vegan diet, but extend the philosophy into other areas of their lives and oppose the use of animals for any purpose. Another term is environmental veganism, which refers to the avoidance of animal products on the premise that the industrial farming of animals is environmentally damaging and unsustainable. So, you know, so that's the definition, and you know, the first thing I'm going to say is that I, I'm not a big fan of single word, single words that mean a whole bunch of things, because then, you know, things get miscommunicated, right? And so, you know, as much as a lot of you guys like the term vegan and, and you know all this kind of stuff and I think it's great if you want to call yourself a vegan I don't like to live my life with labels that being said I will explain how I feel and what I do in my life as terms to animal products okay but the other thing is from the Wikipedia definition it says you know veganism is a practice of abstaining from the use of animal products so it's basically abstaining completely whereas the definition from vegan.org which coined the term is, uh, you know, which I, pr I prefer, which is, uh, you know, a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as practicable and possible, right? I, I like that term because, you know, even true ethical vegans, you know, you're driving your car, you're an ethical vegan, a windshield hits your windshield or a bug hits your windshield, you kill it. Are you no longer vegan because now you're driving in a car on the freeway late at night and the, and the moths are going to your headlights and you're killing a bunch of bugs? I mean... Here's the thing, you know, like, th there's no, like, true, like, 100% ultimates or, you know, uh, true anything in the world, you know. There's, we're always basically striving to do the best we can. And, you know, I, I have a garden. And, you know, having a garden one, is one of the best things that happened to me once I was eating a plant-based diet. Um, you know, because I saw that some of my plants would get bug damage. So I had two choices. Either I get to eat the food that I'm growing, you know, uh, let, let it have some bug holes, like a lot of my plants actually have some bug holes at this point, um, and let the bugs eat them, or I could take care of the pests so that I can eat the plants, right? Now, how many of you guys are the, that are vegans go to the grocery store and buy lettuce or 
you know, organic food or conventional food, and there's no bug holes, right? If you're eating organic food that's vegetables or even crops and grains, right, they are spraying these crops or grains or vegetables or fruits with all kinds of pesticides that are killing bugs. So even though you didn't contribute to that, uh, you know, directly, you're not aware that the food you're grown is grown with chem pesticides that are killing other creatures and animals on the planet. So are you no longer vegan? You know, so that's the question. So, you know, I, I didn't really ever think about that. I was like, you know, a long time ago, I might have considered myself vegan because I knew that, you know, I, I didn't eat animals. So I might eat honey, but I didn't eat animals. And then I got an argument one time with a speed dating girl that said, you're not vegan if you ate honey 10 years ago. I'm like, or, you know, fine, whatever. If you ate raw milk products 10 years ago, you're not, okay, fine. Don't call me vegan. At that point, when she went off on me and called me non-vegan, because I had dairy products, you know, whatever, and I experimented with raw dairy to see how it would make me feel. Because frankly, I got into this only because of my diet. I was a dietary vegan, which I could say confidently, except for eating some honey. Um, you know, so I wasn't even dietary vegan. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, I'm not going to ever make a no longer raw, uh, vegan video because I don't consider myself vegan. I consider myself plant-based. That being said, before you turn this video off, you know, Here's my philosophy, and I want to explain to you guys, you know, I don't consider myself vegan, but this is what I, I believe, okay? Number one, I don't believe any animals should be used for food purposes, right? We do not need to eat animals for food purposes. That's my belief. And what I've seen, you know, do people eat animals for food purposes? Of course, yes. You know, do, do, John, in some of your videos, you promote killing animals. Well, you know, here's what I think. I think, I think... I will not kill an animal for food purposes. I don't think other people should kill animals for food purposes. I definitely don't think people should be just going to the store and buying meat or dairy products in packages because that is because that it means you're disconnected with your food, right? And what here's the thing. If you uh, this is my belief, right? If you want to eat animals, you should go through the whole process, right? I go through the process. I know how these vegetables are raised. I see my eight, these aphids on the back of this leaf, and I'm smushing them right now. Oh, I'm not vegan. All right, fine. But, you know, when I started gardening, then I saw that something has to be done or I'm not eating, right? And I have vegans that are, you know, friends that are vegans that pick up snails and put them over their friend's fence. So, you know, I might get the neighbors pissed off at you. <laughs> but, but at least the slugs won't eat your stuff unless they come back. But anyways, uh, so if you want to eat animals, I would say grow your own and do it yourself, right? Because that you're going to get a connection. And I think for me, veganism is about having a connection. And just in general, life is about having connections. And we're being, we're, we're moving the connections in our lives between each other with things like the internet, with, you know, with, with you know, you're not even knowing your neighbors, with so many different things. And you don't, we don't have a connection with our food. Even vegans, you know, I'm not a big fan of vegans eating, you know, processed diet cheese or tofu burgers or whatever that is made in a factory because you don't know the process, right? If you want to eat animals, I say that you should raise them and kill them yourself, raise them and milk them yourself, right? Because then at least you're connected. I honestly think in the deepest part of my heart that most people are not going to raise an animal as their pet and then kill them personally. I would never kill my dog, Oakley, to, to eat them. I mean, I, I'd eat grass. I'd eat, I'd eat so many other things. Just, I mean, I would just never even eat my dog, you know. <laughs> so, and, and that's how it is. Like, people are killing their animals that they're raising because they don't have a connection with the animal, you know, and they just believe it them to be food and or they, you know, believe that they need them to survive, to have nutrients, to nutrition. And I know I'm going to get flamed on the, on the comments for this, but, you know, I think that, you know, basically, if we eat animals, we're, we're eating concentrated nutrients, right? A cow, they're eating tons of grass, and then they basically, you know, build the proteins from the grass they eat, you know, and, and, and put on muscle and meat and all this stuff, because they eat lots of grass. The challenge is people are not eating enough grass or vegetables in their diets, you know? And, I mean, basically, we need to be the concentrators. We need to concentrate our nutrients, have a wide spectrum of nutrients, and get those into us, and that's why I like juicing so much, honestly. But, you know, so while I don't think people should raise their animals to just slaughter them and kill them or to milk them, you know, if somebody wants to eat meat, that's how I think they should do it. Because if they go through the process, I believe they'll actually turn vegan on their own. And you could never convince anybody to become vegan by, you know, maybe by talking to them. Some people might flip over. But it's a process for most people. 
and some people will never be all vegan. And so the other thing I believe when I saw uh, Dr. Michael Clapper talk, you know, and this really struck a chord with me, and I remember it to this day, I was at the Vegetarian Summerfest in Pennsylvania one year. You know, he talked about, you know, converting 100% of the planet to 80% or 90% vegan, plant-based, right? Instead of converting, you know, 100% of the people, 100% vegan. You know, even if you converted 90% or 80% of the whole world, 80% vegan, just where they just basically minimize their animal consumption, you know, it'd be far better than, you know, converting 10% of the population to all vegan, right? I mean, so that's like a numbers game, and that just made sense to me. So, I, you know, I'm here to promote a plant-based diet. People want to eat animals. You know, they could do that. I'm not promoting to kill them, but if you do want to eat them, and I'm going to say we do not need to eat them. We do not need to eat, you know, their, their milks or, you know, any kind of animal products. Even honey. Honey is a concentrated animal product. I'm not really going to get into honey, but check the links down below for more videos I have on honey and the bees. I mean, the main thing I get, John, honey's not vegan. All right, I, I get that. Honey's not vegan. I eat honey on rare, geez, I haven't eaten honey in like three months. But I like to eat honey on rare occasion. That's from a friend of mine's farm that, you know, harvests sustainably and took care of their bees and provided them a home. It doesn't torture them, you know. And I do not agree with buying honey in the store or even most farmer's markets where the, the bees are treated bad and they're basically slaves to the farmer's you know, to basically work horses to make them money, right? That's not how nature should work, in my opinion. There's a recipro reciprocity in, in nature. You know, I'm letting these plants grow in my garden. I'm going to let some of them go to seed, collect the seeds, and spread the seeds, you know, and, and there needs to be reciprocity in nature, and we've lost that. So I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say on this topic. I'm going to say that, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to ever make a no longer vegan video because I consider myself plant-based. I, I eat plants. I strive as far as practical and possible to exclude any kind of animal exploitation from my life. You know, if, if there's bugs in my garden and they are eating my plants, which is going to prevent me or my, my, my loved ones, like Oakley, from preventing us from eating the, uh, the high quality food, you know, then I will have to deal with them and take appropriate actions. In addition, I'm going to say I'm not perfect, right? I, I bought a used car. I bought a used car. It has leather seats. John, you're not vegan. Go I'm not saying I'm vegan, number one. Number two, I'm trying to do it as far as practical and possible. The car that I bought had all the other features I wanted, and, you know, it wasn't a feature that I wanted to have it, that it had leather seats. It happened to have the lowest price as well as some other features that I really wanted. So I bought the car based on the other features and the low price, not that it actually had leather seats. I would have to wait. I didn't even know if I even have the car now if I had to wait for the same exact version at a lower price with, with vegan seats or, you know, non-leather seats. I have a friend, he's a pretty, I would consider him a pretty hardcore vegan, right? And his, his dad, his parents gave him a, a used car that had leather seats. If he accepts the car, even though he didn't pay for it, and he's driving it, and he's caught in it, is he now no longer vegan? Because you're driving, you have a car that has leather, but my dad gave it to me. So, I mean, here's the thing. I want you guys to be aware and informed and make personal choices based on what you believe and what is important to you. That's what I do in my, in my life, right? I do what's important to me, what makes sense to me. You know, I, I always try to go vegan and eat and dis, and not harm animals to the to the best as practical and possible for me, which is a lot more than most people. You know, because I mean, I don't eat any meat, I don't eat any dairy products unless somebody sneaks it in on me. At this point, I eat honey rarely, so dietarily, I'm almost a vegan, but not quite. But nonetheless, I don't like definitions. Um, you know, I have some shoes. I don't. I don't think they're. I don't think they're. Vegan either, you know, I, I found that sometimes a good shoe holds up better if it's not vegan in a recent, um, or if it is, yeah, if it's not vegan. So in, in a recent episode, you know, I t somebody asked me, John, is it better to buy polyester, you know, clothes, which is made out of plastic, which basically when you wash it, it breaks down into microplastics, which then goes into the environment and then ends up probably in the sea and is hurting fish, you know, so that's actually really, in my opinion, not vegan or get some, some kind of natural material like wool secondhand or, or some other material secondhand, right? What's, what's more, you know, well, there's more sustainability and there's more functional and there's more vegan, you know? And while wearing some fur, well, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do fur, but maybe, well, I guess leather, wool is fur. But anyways, do the best you guys can is the message, you know? And think about these things and try to make, you know, choices based on what's most important to you and be aware you know, I would always encourage you guys to do, you know, choose compassion 
and the least harm possible. You know, in general, I don't go out of my way to kill bugs. Like, you know, if, I, if there's bugs hanging out in my garden, they're not bothering me. I mean, I won't always kill all my aphids. Sometimes they, I let them live because I'm just lazy. Most of the time, I just spray them off with water. I don't usually really use any kind of hardcore pesticides that have any residual effects because they could also affect my soil microbes. You know, um, I mean, if I see if there if there's an animal or creature that is gonna that is gonna be possibly hurt me or my dog Oakley or my family, then I will have to deal with them. I mean, you know, if you're in a, in the woods and a bear attacks you, oh, I'm vegan. I'm not gonna hurt it back, and it's gonna kill you. Now I'm gonna freaking defend myself, right? So, you know, I don't know. That's just my. These are just my opinions on the topic. I guess. Uh, I guess I want to respond to a comment here. So it says, uh, this was made on one of my gardening videos, Growing Your Greens. Check the link down below for the actual video. It's a quite a good video, I thought. It says, uh, it was an aquaponics video. Don't think you should support aquaponic if you're vegan. IMO, it's cruel for fish to live in confined small spaces, eating the same food and swimming in less clean water than if they were in nature. Not to mention... They are even farming the fish for food. Also, in my opinion, aquaponic veg is less safe and less clean, clean than hydroponic. John speaks badly about factory farming, yet he supports the idea of farming fish. Same difference as factory farming. Disagree with Ken, the owner, IMO. Farm fish could harbor higher levels of toxins than wild fish, as well as greater chance of parasite infestations such as roundworms, which are pretty, pretty much found in every fish tank. All right, so... Um, yeah, so the video, you know, here's the, here's the thing, right? I promote people growing their own food and getting connected with the food that they're growing. If somebody wants to have an aquaponic system, I think that's great. They could have the fish. Hopefully, they would keep them as pets. You could, they could use, you know, and they provide enjoyment. They could hopefully use the, their waste, the poop, to grow their vegetables and hopefully just have their fish as pets and use them as part of the system and realize that, realize that and that's actually my desired outcome for aquaponics i don't think fish should be you know farmed and you know bought and killed and sold even if you know the, the farm that i visited they they slaughter in a humane way possible which i have a big problem with that definition there is no humane slaughter i mean so I mean, oh yeah we harvest our fish and humanely slaughter. well let me humanely slaughter you even if i humanely slaughter somebody i'm going to jail man <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway so that that's all that's all bs in my opinion but nonetheless you know uh, aquaponics is a much more sustainable method of farming than many other methods, in my opinion. I mean, I'd rather have somebody do some kind of aquaponics, which is more organic, more local, than like, you know, shipped in conventional produce from Mexico that has to travel thousands of miles, whereas the aquaponics is local. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Oh, wait, what else? Sorry. I did this. The other thing I will comment on that comment is that I'm not vegan, right? So I just said that I'm plant-based. I'm not vegan, although I can believe in compassion. You know, I want to encourage people out there to, to do better, whether that's in moving towards more local food, growing your own food, or whatever. I do not believe in, you know, farming fish for food. That being said, you know, I'd rather have somebody farm fish than start pulling fish out of the ocean where fish are being farmed at alarming rates out of the ocean and the oceans are being depleted. That's a far worse problem, in my opinion, and always it comes down to you know, what's more important to you? Is veganism the most important? Then you're going to, you know, chastise me for making an aquaponics video. If you're aware of the, the, the fish declining population in the ocean, you know, then it'd probably be, it, it'd be better to support aquaponics, in my opinion, in that respect. But there's so many different factors for every different thing in the world. If you just look at one factor, you know, then, then, you, then you're going to kind of get yourself in some trouble. So I try to think, take in many factors in consideration. Um, you know in life and you know once again I always like to teach good better best right optimally nobody on earth would be eating any animals or slaughtering them for food that's what I think um, but you know the world's not all vegan <laughs> and I personally don't believe it would would will ever be although it would be nice if it did and I wouldn't object that being said you know my goal in every video is to get people to eat less animals and even not even less animals less animals, less animal products, and more importantly, less processed foods, right? I'd rather somebody eat some vegetables out of that aquaponics garden than eat a tofu dog, right? Highly processed foods are also bad for the planet, all the transportation, all the energy expelled in making them. I also want to encourage you guys to make your own food and prepare your own food in your kitchen, all right? Another question regarding veganism is, 
Um, let's see. They Basically, I posted an Instagram picture of my dog eating jackfruit. Check that link down below. You know, that's a cute little video where my dog's eating my uh, jackfruit rag. <laughs> and it says, uh, basically, your dog eats meat, right? Please tell me the majority of this his diet is meat. And everybody always gets upset, you know, with, with all these things. So... You know, here's the thing, you know, some people might believe dogs are carnivores and I would probably agree dogs are, you know, more carnivorous than we are. Absolutely. We are actually more frugivores or meant for eating plants with, you know, our non-sharp teeth and our long digestive systems. Dog digestive systems are short. You know, they are meant for digesting things rather quickly. You know, that being said, in nature, dogs are scavengers. You know, well, modern day dogs are scavengers. They'll eat whatever they could find. You know, my dog killed baby kittens, which brought tears to my eyes. He did not eat them. It made me probably one of the saddest things in my whole life, having to deal with dead dead kittens that my dog killed that he, that he didn't even eat. I mean, if he's going to kill them, he should eat them, damn it. And that, that really kind of like, it made me really sad. And it also made me very upset for like the waste that's going on, you know, that, that he killed him and, and maybe he didn't even know he killed him. But yeah, so he's a carnivore, but he's he's not going to kill, even if he kills little animals, he doesn't eat them. So like, I don't feel right with, you know, feed him an all meat diet personally. I mean, I know there's a raw food, you know, dog diet, which is mostly meat. And, you know, I, I don't believe that's ultimately healthy for pet, for dogs, right? In nature, they wouldn't just eat you know, only meat. They, they, yeah. If it was, they, they'd eat whatever they could find. They'd be scavengers. I've seen dogs chewing on grass. I see dogs eat all kinds of things, in, 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 in you know, out there. So my personal belief, and you know, you could say with what you want. What I do about my dog and what I do about my life. You, everybody's gonna have their opinions. I would encourage you guys to whatever your opinions are, is to do those in your life. You know, and, and respect my opinions. I think another big problem with the whole world today is intolerance. You know, oh, you're a Democrat, I'm not listening to you. Oh, John, you're not 100% vegan, I'm unsubscribing. John, you're not 100%, you know, raw vegan, you know, or raw, unsubscribing. I'm not listening to you. Like, intolerance is what is really the poison to the whole entire planet. And I want to encourage you guys to, you know, have acceptance, live with gratitude, right? And, and even if you agree, I mean, there's probably things that you disagree with your husband or wife on, right? And you just, I'm never going to listen to you again because you don't take out the garbage and I think you should. Or, you know, the woman's supposed to do the dishes and, you know, she doesn't. I mean, like, we need to have compassion towards others and understanding instead of this intolerance. You know, especially from the top down, intolerance is, is, is ruining the world. And this is some of the role models in high places at this point in time, which I do not, which I believe, you know, that, that's a poison and it, it's really hurting the whole planet, um, as well as our country. So I would encourage you guys to have tolerance. So anyways, the way I feed my dog, Oakley, is I, I don't force any food upon him. Uh, he's not vegan, number one. So I, vegans might be mad at me, but the other thing is I don't declare myself vegan either. <laughs> my dog does eat meat and other animal products. Most of the time he eats meat. He very rarely eats dairy because I don't think dairy is necessarily good for dogs. You know, another farmer gave me some eggs. I crack open the eggs as much as I don't like to touch them, and I feed them to my dog so he can be healthy. He does Eggs are a treat for him. He doesn't really get those. But what he normally gets is this. He eats what I eat, right? I eat plant-based, uncooked, unprocessed food that I prepare at home, right, for the majority of what I eat, right? 99% of my meals, because I rarely eat out, are plant-based, nutrient-dense, which is a whole different thing, you know, because you could just be plant-based and give me non-nutrient-dense. He, raw plant-based, so I drink juices, he gets juices, he gets juice pulp, he gets some of the, you know, when I strain out my juice, he gets all that, you know, the, the soft, smaller pulp uh, mixed in with juices. He gets green smoothies, he gets blended salads, and every night for dinner, he usually gets what I'm eating for dinner. He all pretty much always loves it, on a rare occasion he doesn't. If I'm eating fruit, like yesterday I was eating my mesa pote, Guess what? Oakley man got my mesa pote, you know, two dollars and fifty nine cents a pound my mesa pote. Most of you guys won't buy that for yourself, but he got that right. That's what I was eating. He got some of the parts that I really that wasn't maybe as ripe enough for me, but it was ripe enough for him, so he ate it. You know, um, he gets good fruit too. You know, papayas, bananas. You know, whatever I'm eating, if he's gonna eat it, he's gonna eat it. That's what he's choosing. I'm not forcing this upon him. I'm not putting a gun to his head. You must eat this, right? 
he chooses to eat it. There's plenty of foods that I'll put in front of him that he won't eat, right? Then guess what? It goes in my compost, and then my bacteria <laughs> eat it in my compost pile, right? Um, but in addition, aside from that, you know, the vegans won't want to hear this, but I get a dehydrated or freeze-dried dog food, right? I've been striving to find a dog food for the Oakley man. He's sitting right here out in the sun. Um, you know, that's mostly plant-based with a little meat, right? You know, as much as I, I would like to have animals 100% vegan, which I have met dogs in the past that have been 100% vegan, and some of the long-lived dogs, according to, you know, what I've, what I've heard here, you know, um, are vegan, so it, it is possible. You know, I don't want my dog to be 100% vegan. You know, I don't, I don't believe animals or dogs should be 100% vegan. But, so he does eat some meat. So, the dehydrated or raw, the dehydrated or freeze-dried raw dog food I get him has meat as the main ingredients, but then it has all vegetables and fruits, and then, of course, some of the different vitamins and minerals that may be required to keep a dog healthy. Because if you're just feeding your dog random stuff, you know, vegan or otherwise, and you're not paying attention, you know, your animal bec can become deficient. Just like with us, right? If we're not paying attention to what we're eating, we can become deficient. Mineral deficient, vitamin deficient. So that's why I encourage you guys to eat a wide variety of things. I think he just walked behind me here. Well, look at, he's walking on my raised bed. Out of the raised bed, ugly man. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah, so he, at, at night he gets basically, oh, here he is. <laughs> at night he gets basically his, his powdered, freeze-dried dog food mixed in with vegetable juice or veg yeah vegetable juice or vegetable stock for soups and I mix that up and then he also gets beans and rice mixed in with that as well as what I'm eating for dinner and that's what this guy gets he seems to like it a lot <laughs> um, I guess he knew I was talking about him um, and then the other thing is if you ever see me in Whole Foods and I'm at the deli counter and I'm like walking out with a little sample of like tuna or salmon like I caught John Cole he's not vegan he got tuna or salmon it's not for me, guys. I would never eat that stuff. But the Oakley man, you know, even a little small sample, it's for free. You know, it's, uh, he loves it. And, you know, I, I think that he should have in the limited amounts, but not too much, uh, you know, fish and have a varied diet. You know, I try to get him different kinds of meats to eat uh, on occasion and minimally processed as possible, raw as possible. And he likes, this, he likes those as a treat. And, you know, and he likes it a lot. So, you know, he gets really excited when I have his little treats that I did not pay for. But, John, you're using it. You're requested. You're not vegan. Well, I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not vegan. I'm just sharing with you guys what I do so I can be fully transparent, right, with you guys. Because it's important to me, you know. So, once again, going back to the original definition as far as practicable and possible, right. That's what I strive to do. You know, my dog, he eats overwhelmingly plant-based you know, I don't know the percentage of meat he eats. I'd say, you know, 25% or less, maybe 20. It depends on the day. Some days he's all vegan. Some days, you know, I'm lazy and he gets, you know, on rare occasion, he'll get sardines, you know, packed in water with no salt added, you know, because I want him to have a very diet. Because I love him. I want him to be as healthy as possible, right? Don't you want to be as healthy as possible? Yes, he does. Plus, he likes some of the things. I mean, I see how excited he gets sometimes. I mean, he really liked the mame sapote yesterday. Anyways, uh, I think I only have a few more comments to respond to. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it says, uh, is your dog on a raw vegan diet too? No, he's not. All right. Okay, so then another thing I want to comment on is another comment I read. It says, it was under a video I recently posted. If you're not 100% raw, I just don't want to hear anything you have to say. So that means that that person should probably unsubscribe from my channel because I'm not 100% raw. I'm like maybe 99% raw myself. You know, and personally, I don't believe that anybody really out there is 100% raw. Maybe I have one friend that really is 100% raw. He grows basically all his own fruits, and he doesn't eat a lot of vegetables <laughs> um, on his own farm. But, you know, if you're just buying nuts at the store, they're probably been heat processed. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm an exception person. This is the kind of person, maybe you have friends that are like this. I always try to find exceptions to the rule, and I always, I'll always find an exception. You know, and, and on some levels, that's good for me. On some levels, especially in relationships, that's actually really bad that I'm an exception person. So the person should realize that I'm an exception person and I'm always going to pick out, you know, little things that aren't always the same. It's like when you're a kid, you, you have a picture of a circle, a circle, a circle, and a square, and you're like, which one's different? And so we're trained to, like, pick out what's different, right? So, um, so yeah, so, you know, I have, I have come to the realization that there are some heat-processed foods that are quite beneficial for us and to exclude them as food groups because of a dogma, whether it's raw, 
being raw vegan or eating only raw foods or whether it's being vegan, you know, I would encourage you guys to check your dogma and, and kind of think what makes more sense to you despite any dogma that you're just expected to go with so that you can have a label. I, don't, I, I personally just don't really like labels. You know, I guess the definition of raw, though, is not as extreme as vegan. You know, some definitions of raw say 75 or 80 percent, as long as you eat 75 or 80 percent, you know, raw foods, not heat processed, you can consider yourself raw. So in that respect, I consider myself raw because I'm up in the 90 percentile plus. I mean, just the other day I used my Instapot that I would cook, you know, Oakley's rice and beans with to basically, you know, process, cook shiitake mushrooms at pressure for a minimal amount of time because in some studies they show that, you know, heat processed shiitake mushrooms, you get more of certain nutrients than others. Of course, some others might be more uh, better raw, but of course the chitin is non-digestible unless it's broken down with some heat, as well as there can be some toxins in mushrooms that are not broken down unless they are heat processed. So yeah, most mushrooms actually probably shouldn't even be eaten raw in my opinion. Um, and you know, and that's from talking to like Paul Stamets. I want to get an interview with him talking specifically more about this topic when I see him in person uh, next. So yeah, so I mean, check the link down below for a video I made on some uh, heat processed foods that I eat. I mean, the list is fairly short. I think I eat some heat processed beans that have usually been cooked and then um, fermented. So then they're considered live. I also have on rare occasion eaten just cooked beans with lots of vegetables, like when I'm traveling and there's no other source of food, but that's, that's the exception, not the rule for sure. You know, I would rather juice my kale than eat it. You know, I'd rather blend my kale, you know, or than cook it. I mean, juice my kale instead of cook it or blend my kale than cook it or eat my kale than cook it. But you know, foods that I want to include that would not easily, easily be edible raw and or confer different nutritional benefits that need to be heat processed in order to make them non-toxic for us. You know, I'm going to do it. Those are basically my only exceptions. Other times might be convenience on rare occasion. Like I just bought some, uh, you know, tart cherry concentrate, which has been heat processed. But even though it's been heat processed and it was on clearance for like $2.99 and it's like normally like $20 a bottle, you know, I don't just drink that stuff. It's so, so I did actually drink it straight one night, but it like I, I got kind of ill. So I, I just use a little bit of that in with my fresh squeezed orange juice or other fresh juices. So, you know, I'm um, more so than the raw dogma. I'm more so about a nutritarian dogma or eating for phytonutrients and phytochemicals. I believe this is one of the most important things you could do. And I, I do basically as much nutrient dense raw foods as possible. But if I'm traveling and, you know, I can't get good fruit or something, I might have something heat processed. But it's in no major amounts. And then, of course, once I get back home, you know, I basically, um, you know, eat all raw. And even when I'm traveling, I eat mostly all raw. I mean, I might have a heat process. I had heat processed black carrot juice that was on clearance at Trader Joe's for half price because I, was, I wasn't, I didn't have my juicer with me. And I was traveling for like a weekend and I wanted some juice. And that was probably, you know, one of the most, you know, delicious and cost effective options for me at that time. And so once again... I would encourage you guys to, you know, maybe check the dogma, you know, take the components of different dogma, you know, that's going to serve you the best, leave the rest behind, try not to live your life by labels, live by your values and what's more important to you, what makes most sense to you, so you can be truly authentic in your life, because trying to be, be someone you're not, whether you're saying vegan or whether you're saying whatever, you know, and, and you know inside you're really not, that's incongruency and that's going to hurt you more in the long run than not. You know, I don't really own any shirts that say vegan on them. I, 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 I you know, I, I never really felt comfortable wearing a vegan shirt just because I don't consider myself vegan. Although, once again, I do not believe that animals should be consumed for food. Um, but I have a more strict definition than maybe others. And I'm fine with being called non-vegan, you know. I mean, maybe if my channel was called OK or Raw Vegan... I'd have a lot more subscribers because some of the vegan channels, Mike the Vegan, you know, I mean, vegan in your name, happy, healthy, vegan. Some of those guys have like so many subscribers and I'm so grateful that they do. But, you know, I'm not about to put the word vegan in any of my channels, although I may use the term vegan in a dietary sense, in a title to convey that basically I'm teaching people about a, a plant-based recipe that excludes animal products because basically all my recipes are all vegan in the sense that I don't use any animal products in them. All right, so hope that explains more about my opinions on this subject matter. Um, you know, 
let me know if you guys like this rant, didn't like this rant in the comments down below. This is just one of my rant videos. I'm just share with you guys what I think, what I feel, um, and that's what it is. People will like this, people will hate it. That's all right. I need to express myself to be full and complete for me. <laughs> and also many of you guys may be curious about what I do and what my beliefs are in my life as well. So uh, yeah. So if you guys want more episodes like this, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to share this video with somebody that you might think it could help. Maybe post it in an online forum, you know, uh, whatever. Um, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I've coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll share what we'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And uh, make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. Um, finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are Wealth of Knowledge. There are 500 episodes at this time. I teach you guys all the best ways to eat more plant foods, fruits, and vegetables in your diet. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always best.